sharing issues. Like it's just it's weird. So so when we get into what's the risk, I'll go with science. Well, well, I'll also, science cover. well, also I was, you know, like there was a lot of front end work, and so COVID is basically they're working off the things they've already done before and they feel good about, and then did a little tweak on it to make this one particularly work and then go from there. Like, that's actually safer and surer than I think that people realize that it is. Like, no, like, I understand people initially having questions about doing this. But now we're at a point where it's just like, come on, don't you realize that all the smart people around you are doing this and all the dumbasses in your life are not? Like, like at some point, I do think that people need to start doing that. Take an inventory in your life. Go line up all the people you know that got that jab and then go line up all the people you know who did not get that jab. And which side of, which side of it is the dummies? Because we all know a few. Not everybody on the not jab side is a dummy. Not all of them, but the dummies are over there with you. I had a conversation with the, uh, with the receptionist at the doctor's office who hasn't gotten the vaccine. A receptionist at a doctor's office who hasn't gotten the vaccine. And her justification was because of some pre existing conditions that I have, the vaccine runs the risk of activating some autoimmune conditions that I have. And that, for me, is too great of a risk versus just dipping and dodging around people. And she feels comfortable in the room with vaccinated people. She's one of those people, I wear the mask if it makes you feel comfortable, but I really don't want to wear this thing. Mm -hmm. So there's some people where I'm like, all right, you three made your choice. You've, you've chosen why this isn't, why you're not going to do it. Because there isn't enough R&D for her to know whether or not this is going to kill me or put me in an anaphylactic, whatever, blah, 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 allergic type situation. But it's just tough, man. It's tough to be out. And I, I'm trying to figure this shit out, too, because and I'm trying to figure this out, too, because, you know, I, I got a five-year-old. I, like, I keep trying to ask the question. I finally got an answer from somebody. Can a vaccinated person be an asymptomatic carrier? To which they told me no. Or extremely unlikely. Whatever the probability is. But, you know, I'm vaccinated. So I'm doing the best I can. I, I go to the club. I sit in the back. I walk on stage. I tell my jokes. I'm sorry. There will be no meet and greet. There will be no pictures after the show. No disrespect to y'all. I had a great time in Philadelphia. Somebody sent me a tweet. Why you ain't come out after the show? Because I don't know y'all. <laughs> Respectfully. I got you in the next time. Yeah. No, no. Like, this is, as we, as people can clearly see, this is an over man. Like, like this, is, this is still a thing. This is still active in these streets. It's still out here running. I'm just... Hmm. I try not to be generally speaking too judgmental with people, not just because it's like a personal decision, but I also, I understand a measure of skepticism that people have, just like, especially black people like toward doctors, like I get a certain measure of skepticism, but also I feel like somebody told you about Justine one time, you don't even know what the hell the story was on that situation, and now you're just breaking this back out here in order to get it right, go, go get in the same line as white people. And then, then you can feel sure that you're not getting the Tuskegee dose, right? Like, go make sure they're real white people. You know what I'm saying? If they speak Spanish, they might get the bad dose, too. I don't know. Like, make sure you go find some WASP, get the same shot as them, and then you ain't got to worry about Tuskegee because they ain't going to kill them. Here's a question, though, about LeBron and Chris Paul since they're kind of in the same burrito on this. Yeah. Like, here's the other thing we say about athletes. Uh, athletes call themselves warriors, but then we also tell athletes it's important to choose yourself and do what's right for you. The yes. team will replace you. The team will let you go. The team does not care about you. So at all times, make sure that you're making decisions for you. 
Look, you don't, you don't get nowhere by telling people, stop doing that because what you're doing is stupid. Because people get defensive and everything else. And I recognize that. But what we're not about to do is eradicate the idea that some things are stupid. And some things I do believe are stupid. And I do believe that by and large, this reluctance that people have about getting this jab are for largely stupid reasons. Like you said, the woman that you talked about. That is not a stupid reason, right? Like, she believes because of her autoimmune situation or whatever it is, that seems perfectly reasonable, and I got you. I don't find very many people who give me reasons for not getting the jab that don't sound stupid because most of them don't actually have reasons. They just not going to do it. They just scared. And you're right. I've you done have to research. do what you think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Have have research. I've done some reading on where. That's always my next question. Anytime somebody right. says they've done the read, I'm aware. Well, I well, it wasn't really reading, it was a video. You know, like, like that was the, that was the, like, here's my question too, uh, for those people also, because it's like, these people you're talking to, I'm assuming, are people that you like talk to about other stuff, like fairly regularly, and the likes, you know? And I'm like, well, why didn't you tell me about this when you read it? Why are you keeping all this information to yourself? Like, I don't know about you, right? But like, I'm kind of like, people like to run things by me, right? I'm kind of the smart friend. They're like, hey man, what you think about this? You know? And so I have people who run things by me and I'd be like, yeah, I don't really know about this. So forth and so on. And I'm just looking at it like, okay, so you did this read, but this time you don't need to holler at me about it? This time you don't want me to let you know what the deal is? And as I've talked about on here before, when you ask people, you got that jab, and their response is, not yet. No, just not. Just say not. Ain't no yet. You're not going to do it. There's nothing stopping you from doing it right now. Um, who, who, somebody dropped the not yet. Sam Darnold dropped the not yet. Sam and I said, yeah, and I sent the tweet just saying, don't say not yet. You just not going to do it. And then, of course, all the hit dogs popped up. And they're like, well, it's obvious that what he means is that he doesn't know the long-term um, the long-term consequences of this. That's what you got from not yet. That's what, that him, I need to get more information. And magically, you know exactly what information it is that he needs. No, that's your story. And now you projecting that onto other people because you know that I think that you are stupid. So hearing me say that I think what he's saying might be ridiculous means you know I'm saying that you are stupid. And you just might be there. How great is it that we live in a time where we question science and deny history in our textbooks? Yes. It's so awesome. That it's we're just, nah, screw all of that. Is one plus one still two? And we're going to argue about that as well. It's the collapse of institutions, man. Wait, what, what do people trust? What's left that people across the board trust? Because that's what it seems like to me. It's just like people, there's nothing that we at large agree upon and trust. Like you ever see that clip where somebody asked David Bowie like in the year 2000 about what the internet was going to be? And he was like, oh, no, no, no. What you're going to find out is that there is no universal concept of truth and that we are a fractured people and the internet is going to show us just how fractured we are, which obviously and exactly proved to be what it is. But we got nothing that people trust. We agree on the days of the week. We agree on the time of day for the rotation of the Earth. We don't agree on the shape of the Earth, but we at least always agree it is moving. The sun goes up and down. We don't even agree on daylight saving time. No, we don't agree on time. Take that back. That's true. There's places that are getting rid of daylight savings time. That's why, I, which, which brings me to another question I have for you. This Father's Day, give the father figure in your life the gift of natural relief of muscle tension, aches, and soreness caused by everyday stress and strain with Theragun. Theragun is the handheld percussive therapy device that releases your deepest muscle tension using a scientifically calibrated combo of depth, speed, and power. And it's as quiet as an electric toothbrush. Whether you want to treat your muscle tension from working out, an injury, or just the stresses of everyday life, there's no substitute for the Theragun Gen 4. I love to use Theragun after a tough leg workout. The day after, it starts feeling a little bit tight. That is the best feeling in the world for me, and I bet you'll feel the same way, too. Theragun is trusted by 250 professional sports teams like Real Real Madrid and elite athletes like Paul George, DeAndre Hopkins, Maria Sharapova, hundreds of thousands of customers, and me. Now until Father's Day, purchase any Theragun Pro and receive a free wave solo. That's a $79 value with powerful vibration and pressure for targeted areas like your heat and hip flexors for free. 
Stress less with Theragun's 30-day money-back guarantee by going to therabody.com slash Beaumont. Therabody.com slash Beaumont. About an appropriate or inappropriate thing to say to someone in the workplace. At this debate um, with a co-worker earlier this week, can a white person wish a black person a happy Juneteenth? No. I mean, they can, but you, you ain't really that hesitation. It's that weird. Hesitation. Right you, ain't, you ain't got to do that, though. Like, it ain't, it ain't necessary. Yeah. Like, how do you handle Hanukkah? I don't. It never comes up. I've come to find that our Jewish brothers and sisters don't care about Hanukkah nearly as much as we do. <laughs> Wait, what? I enjoy Hanukkah because it's more days off from work. Like, it, yo, it takes a move into New York. Oh, yeah. Holy like, world. Yo, Alabama, down south, you are not getting all them Jewish holidays off. But in New York City, oh, man, you just moving to New York, New York, you gain at least an extra 10 to 15. That's, what That's crazy. What makes Loki kick? You get it. Independence, style, authority, pain, life, glorious purpose. Original series now streaming on right? Disney+. Plus. Now the first since, if we're going to get into that, you were part of the only Bucks team to ever win an NBA title, and that was 50 years ago this year, which underscores just how difficult it is to do in the NBA. Milwaukee, I, yeah. What do you think of how the Bucks series against the Nets has progressed and what it would mean if they could get through here and even win a title, what it would mean to the city of Milwaukee? I think the, the, the folks in Milwaukee will, will lose their minds, you know, because it's it just, they, they've they been snake bit a number of times by injuries and, uh, you know, had great teams. I remember when Bob Lanier uh, went there and played on his career and had, had a great run there, but they, they just couldn't make it into the finals. So uh, they, they're going to have to get it done, you know, one way or the other. And they, they, have, uh, they have the horses, but... Uh, there is a reason why we play the game. Yes. <laughs> I know during the break we were talking that, uh, as you put it, uh, Kevin Durant is, is not here to play. So uh, that, that is something they will have to overcome. I do want to get into how you did leave Milwaukee because it was actually on this date. We have the anniversary right now. 46 oh, wow. years ago on this date is when you were traded from Milwaukee to the Lakers. And we've talked about this before. You kept that trade request private. You played a full season without incident before the trade was actually made. You went and did your job. But looking back, why did you feel, since we are on the anniversary of it today, it was the best move for your career? And, and really, you were you were at the birth of player empowerment saying, I would like to be moved. About you. Um, the the uh, reason that I tried to keep it uh, on the down low as much as I could is because, you know, I really appreciated the way the people in Milwaukee had treated me. You know, they, uh, they gave me well and they supported me. And, you know, I wanted to give them an opportunity to get the best deal that they could get for me. Uh, and the more I kept my mouth shut, the easier that could have happened. So I, I decided I, you know, I'd keep my mouth shut and let them try to make the best deal that they could because I wasn't going to play another year there. Right. And, uh, you know, it, it, it all worked out for me. You know? Yeah, clearly. <laughs> we can see that right now with yeah. the footage. Absolutely. And I know that the city of Milwaukee has been looking for someone like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar since. They're very happy with their two-time MVP, but they would be even happier if they could get a Kareem-like title there back in Milwaukee. So we will follow that as well. The honest and those guys are, um, you know, the, I, I've been there to, to see them play. Mm -hmm. They're an incredible team, but uh, I, you know I, I don't know what it is. Uh, it, it, sometimes it's uh, just you, you can't get the right team to go as far as you want it to go. But it, it's still a great team and it wins the support of, of, of all the fans. Do you You're think just gonna have to figure out a, a, a better? A better approach. Do you think that this Bucks team, the way it is now, do you think that this team is capable of winning a title? No. I don't. I, you know, KD would kill those guys. <laughs> no, I'm serious. No, you know, no, we know you are. He, he finds the open guy. He, you know, he, 
he, he could do that by himself. He, they they got to do a better job. You know, the, the whole team has to play differently so that KD, one guy, can't just dominate like that. Well, they'll have one more, one more shot at it, and we'll see what they can do in game six. Kareem, I, I just, it is just such a privilege to get to be able to talk to you. I always say I have the most fun job, but it's getting to actually meet and talk to you over the years, you, frankly, <laughs> has made me feel like I have just, the, mo the honor is, is out of control, so. And uh, let you guys know, we've, uh, the Social Justice Award, uh, we yes. had a uh, meeting on that, and we've got it all figured out. And uh, oh. I'm really, I'm looking forward to, you know, Making the announcement, I, I'm, I'm very honored that they would uh, you know, choose me to represent that. You know, I, I grew up uh, watching Jackie Robinson and, and, and Bill Russell as my heroes. You know, Muhammad Ali, I, I, I stand on their shoulders. So uh, to, to be single out like this is, is really special. I'm very grateful. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus. It's a perfect day to come out and play at Sesame Place. Join Elmo, Abby, and all your favorite furry friends.